Welcome to tutorial one for creating interactive flip charts. Uh, this flip chart that I've created here is kind of a spin-off to the magic box. So if you've seen the magic box online or on Promethean Planet, this is sort of the same idea. Um, I've just used a different graphic and used a little bit of a different way of going about doing it. Uh, but I want to remind you how this page works and then I'm going to take you through the steps of creating it. So basically what we have here is uh, a question or a prompt for the students to think about who this person could be that we're about to show. We're about to show icons of this person. We want them to try to think about who it might be. And to show the icons, I'm just going to drag them from beneath the light bulb here. Okay, so um, you know you get three icons here. We obviously know this is probably a Stonebridge person, and that's what we want students to think about right off the bat. It's a very broad, general concept, and we want them to just say, "Okay, we know this is a Stonebridge person, but we need to narrow this down." So we're going to get rid of those, and we're going to fish for some more. And this person has an iPad. It's interesting to know. Uh, this person has a family made up of these members. This person has a China stamp on their passport and you can see that the icons become more specific as you drill down all right and we eventually get to the point of realizing that it's the principal of our school okay so that's basically how it works that's the idea and now I'm going to show you how to make it for yourself so what I've done is um, created a blank one here I've kind of started working from a blank one to show you basically how this is set up and the first thing I did is I took this picture of the light bulb and I made it my background. Okay, I'm just gonna get all these icons off here for a minute so you can see it. I made this um, the background. Okay, so here we are starting on a semi-blank slate here. Um, all I've done is put the pictures on the page. I haven't set them up or layered them or anything. I've just dumped them all on the page so that we can begin working with them. And this background picture of the light bulb is just uh, a picture I found that I'm using as my background. And to make sure that it's on the background, I wanna check its layering position. So to do that, I'm going to go up to View, and I'm going to select Browsers. And this browser window is going to pop up. And this browser window is where we're going to work on, where we're going to do all the stuff we need to do in this flip chart. So you always want to have this browser window open while you're working um, on your flip chart. When you go to present this in your class, you can close that browser up and hide it away. But when you're actually editing a page, that is very important to have open. All right, so you can see our layers right here, the top layer, the middle layer, and the bottom and background layers. Now this is going to, the, the pictures are going to appear exactly how they're labeled there. The top ones are going to be on top, and the middle ones are going to be in the middle, and the bottom one's going to be on the very bottom. And it's important to understand that because that's how we set up this activity. So here's my image one. It's this picture. And I can't move it, I can't drag it or do anything to it because any picture that's on the background, you cannot move it. It locks to the background. If I wanted to move it around, I would have to drag it up to the middle layer or the top layer and then I can move it okay but if you want it to just stay on the bottom and not move which is what we want it to do you want to just keep it right down on the background layer and you can just drag them up and down uh, as you please now these pictures that we're going to work with are on the middle layer you can see them all right here and when I click on them they highlight and the middle layer is exactly where we want these pictures to be Okay, they're in the exact position we want them to be in. Now, the top layer is going to kind of cover up these pictures so that we can drag them from beneath the light bulb, like I showed you in the example. So what I did is I just cut a piece of the picture. Um, I edited this ahead of time. So depending on the picture you use for your background, you might have a little bit of editing work to do there. But what I did is I just cut a little sliver of the background picture, and I put it on the very top layer. You can see it right here. Okay, so with this on the top layer, um, these pictures then are all underneath it. Okay, and my background is still my background. Now the nice thing about these layers is whatever order you have them in, that's what order they're going to drag out from beneath the light bulb. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is lock this picture, this light bulb picture, so that it doesn't move because we don't want to be dragging the light bulb back and forth. So to do that, I'm going to click on this menu bar icon. Once I have my picture selected, I'm going to click on this little guy, and I'm going to select locked. And you'll notice that a little locked symbol came up next to the picture in the object browser box. Um, that just shows you that it is locked. So now I can't move that picture, but I can move all these ones from out underneath it because they're not locked. Okay. 
So what I want to do is I want to make sure that they're in the correct order because you don't want to drag out a more specific icon before you drag out the broad icons. Otherwise, the concept of this whole page doesn't work. So I want to make sure I have these in the right order. So I'm going to just drag them out and see what they are. These are the three I want to have start. So this is number 10, this is number 11, and this is number 12. That's perfect. They're all in the right position. Okay, 10, 11, and 12, we can actually put them in order by 10, 11, and 12. All right, if the Bulldogs were down here, 17 and 18, you'd be dragging them out at the wrong time. So um, they're in the right spot. We're going to leave them out for a minute. And I'm going to drag out 13. That's in the right spot. 14, 15, uh, 17, and 18. Okay. The answer to our question, who do you think this is, is principal. So I just want to show you, if we had this in the wrong spot, if we had principal up here on the middle, top of the middle layer, when we put all these back underneath, okay, they're going to drag out in the order that we have them listed. So the first one that's going to drag out is principal, and that would be the end of our lesson. That would be the end of our questioning. Um, so we want to make sure those are in the correct order. So I'm going to switch that back down to 18. And now, when I drag them out, the first one's going to be number 10, which is my bulldog, which is what I wanted. All right, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have a way to make those icons disappear once we're done using them. So once you pull them out as a cue for students um, and you want to get rid of them, you want to have an easy way to kind of make them disappear so that you can pull out the next set. And it's very simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the picture and we're going to go over here to the action browser. And the action browser is a list of a bunch of actions that you can attach to this graphic to make it do what you want to do. And in this case, we want it to hide itself. So I'm going to select hidden. We want it to go away. And the target icon that I want to have hidden in this example right here is this bulldog picture, image 10. So I'm going to say OK, hide that, and apply changes. So now, you get a little play button here showing you that there's an action attached to this picture. Now once I drag it out and I'm done with it, I can click it and have it go away. Okay? And I can, for the time being, undo that to get it back. Your undo is this arrow right here in your toolbox. Okay, so I'm going to do that for all of them. I'm going to click on each one. I'm going to select hidden. I'm going to find its picture in the target window. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to apply changes. And you would do that for all of your pictures, giving them that hidden feature. Okay, the last thing we need to do is add some text. So we have a prompt for students to look at when they first see our screen. So I'm going to go to the text tool, and I'm just going to type think. And I'm going to make that nice and big on the page. Um, I'm using my font size increaser button here. You can also just uh, type in the size font that you want to have there and it'll just do it a lot faster. Okay, now you can see we're having a little bit of a layer issue because it's behind this picture. So it's showing up on the background, but I want it on top of the light bulb picture. So I'm going to go back into my object browser, and I can see right here that my text is on the middle layer, and that's the problem because the top layer has this picture on it, this um, light bulb, the little sliver light bulb that we cut out. So I'm going to move my text on top of that picture. Now to the top layer, but I have it underneath the light bulb picture, I still have the same problem. It has to be on top, even in the top layer section of the picture I want it to be on top of. So I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to make it just a little bit, a little bit bigger. I'm going to drag this out so it fits in the box. All right, so there we go. Think. Uh, down here, I'm just going to type about. who this could be. All right, And my text is way too big, so I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to highlight my text, and I'm just going to make it a smaller size so I can work with it. Okay. And I have the same issue because it's on the middle layer, so I'm going to drag it up 
to my text layer so that it's underneath there. And I'm going to make this a different color. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make this white. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now if it's going on two lines it's because your box isn't big enough so you just drag that little circle out. And it's actually a little too big to fit on the page. So here we go. Okay, so think about who this could be. There's our page. Our icons drag out and they disappear. And that's the steps for creating this flip chart. Thanks for watching.